everybody. Welcome to the What Culture Gaming Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Tilford, joined by Ash Millman. Hello. Joined by Jules Gill. Hi. And Sony have said a thing that made me think many things, and I thought we should talk about it, as in... That's vague. It is. <laughs> single player versus multiplayer. Now, I'll get your thoughts on all sorts of, I don't know, topics related to this, but there was a, a quote from uh, Sony Interactive's Warwick Light, who was talking to MCV uh, UK Magazine. Mm-hmm. Um, and he basically got across that players are demanding single player games. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, he said, there's yeah, still yeah. a huge audience for games that offer the best in single player narrative with stunning gameplay, as witnessed by the enormous popular of both Spider-Man and God of War in this year's charts. And he said he was just at the Golden Joysticks and God of War won five. God of War has also won the VGAs uh, yep. number one. Yep. Yep. And so it's it's a big talking point this year as far as the return of single player games. Mm-hmm. Um, and I kind of wanted to get your thoughts on that. Do you guys see yourselves as single player, pref- pref- um, preferring single player games? The whole like re- return of single player games, it ain't gone nowhere. I know. Don't call it a comeback. It was already <laughs> here. But uh-huh. no, uh, single player, 100%. I've always seen myself like as a gamer, as a, a single player gamer I don't really enjoy multiplayer in the same way Mm -hmm. as um, things I think they're very two very different industries and two can exist at the same time without it affecting the other one Mm -hmm. yes there is a very thriving multiplayer community at the moment but single player didn't go anywhere we're all just quietly in the dark playing our games I will drop a quote in here then I'll come to you Sir Jules Um, because Shuhei Yoshida who's uh, one of Sony's head like PR chaps um, said that he wishes that Sony were more successful on the multiplayer front um, because he just cited that they have all these you know, big franchises Uncharted, Last of Us, God yeah. of War, all these things that are single player focused and he says that he wishes that they could Sony could tick the multiplayer box as well. Well it's funny because it's those you've listed uh, The Last of Us and uh, Uncharted two games which added in multiplayer that mm. no one actually really wanted. Uh, I will admit Last of Us is actually that, great I, I will admit that actually the multiplayer in those games has been quite good mm. even the Tomb Raider one was pretty good. Bioshock 2 included a multiplayer that nobody asked for but it ended up being pretty good Mass Effect added in. There are, there are games yeah. that have added them into heavily single player focused games that have been successful but no one sees them as multiplayer titles nor do I think in the future that anyone would necessarily want an Uncharted 5 to be like uh, just multiplayer. Just multiplayer. Yeah. I feel like that would actually take away quite a lot of what's been built. I think if you look back uh, through our collective gaming histories mm-hmm. of like us when we were kids our key moments came from narrative games totally. I would say balanced by multiplayer, yeah. balanced by the arcade shooter, most balanced by this. It was always like the drive towards the cinematic that yeah, the industry has been going on mm-hmm. that I'm fully invested in now. People who say, um, like you're saying about it making a comeback, Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of mm. the, like, I won't say greatest storytelling game experiences we've had, uh, but it's, it's incredibly good mm, like yeah. for what it does. Mm. And it's mainly single player. The online is but a shell. Of well, they launched, yeah, they launched it way later yeah. for the Red Dead but, Online. But a shell. But a shell of its form itself. Yeah. But like, I mean, yeah, Red Dead 2, I mean, it's a 70 hour campaign. There's like, yeah. I mean, Arthur, uh, Roger Clark, when he was talking about voicing Arthur Morgan, mm-hmm. had years worth of script time and years mm-hmm. worth of recording time mm-hmm. to bring that character to life. Um, one of the reasons that I brought this up as a topic for the pod, though, is that Sony themselves made a huge push for multiplayer gaming last generation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they were like, this is what players want. We're going to move into multiplayer. And we've seen EA talk about that as well. Mm-hmm. They were like, no one, people don't want single player games. And people like us always went bull hockey because, no, hockey. there's always a, a market for stories in single player. And even if you go all the way back to stories around the campfire, yeah. we will let you talk. But lordy, it's, embe- mm-hmm. it's embedded into the very humanity of why we, how we build social circles and communities. People need stories. All I'll say is, is that I can kind of see what the statement is trying to say. Yes. Sony isn't saying necessarily that single player games are making a comeback in the sense that they, um, you know, they discredited it in the past. What they're saying is there's a lot of money to be made in the well, multiplayer aspect. Yes. I mean, mm. you get past the loot boxes. We just have to look at the microtransaction rates. GTA Online still does incredible amounts of money every single week, mm-hmm. like money that would m- be mind-boggling to the rest of us. So mm. you can see why it's supported. Oh, yeah, you can see of course. why they want stuff to take off because that's where the money is. Mm-hmm. You can have the best story in the world, but if no one's buying it, then you've got less people mm-hmm. to see, you know? Definitely. I think what you're saying about the statement not being necessarily fans are demanding single player games now, it's that all the people who do play single player games are going, no, we're still here and we would like yeah. some more single player games. Yeah. Please don't deviate to a multiplayer market. And yes. that is, that's fair enough as a, as a statement to bring out, mm-hmm. but it's also unnecessary because it's just my whole thing was that stories always had an immortal worth that's what I meant Mm -hmm. by like you could further you back in time people like telling stories you need them and so like one of the things with Sony just to address like their last generation comments like they had this huge push towards the second half of the PS3's life cycle where they um, commissioned a whole bunch of multiplayer focused games Um, but just to reel some off there was MAG which was massive action game 256 players um, PlayStation All Stars Modern Nation Racers Killzone obviously very multiplayer heavy alongside its story but then they had Warhawk and Starhawk were two like online multiplayer games and just they 
they made this big push for multiplayer stuff and none of that stuff took off. And yet the PS4 has seen kind of the alternative yes. where the exclusives seem to be primarily single player narratives like yeah, Horizon yeah. Zero Dawn, you've yeah, got Horizon, like, God Spider-Man, of God of War, like they all seem to be focused on that. Mm-hmm. And it's it, it's it's a worrying statement when you have somebody from the head of a company coming out and saying like, oh, you know, should we cater to the single player things? Because it's like, no, no, because that means at some point in their board meetings mm. that somebody said, let's just scrap all of this. Let's just go fully multiplayer. Mm. Can we not see how much mm. money we're going to make? Well, that's so that's that's yeah. We'll get on to like some specific figures mm. and stuff. But yeah, the business side of single player versus multiplayer. Like, if you have a multiplayer game, the whole games as a service thing, then go on. I think yes. just to dive right in. Good lord. I, I think the most important example we can look at here at all is Fallout 76 because that yeah. is taking the single player market going hey multiplayer is what people want here is me inserting this mm-hmm, into mm-hmm. the uh, the multiplayer domain as a single player experience and nobody liked it nobody asked for it and it just it's it's bombed it's not done very well mm-hmm. like yes there is fans of it and yes that's fine and everything but like it isn't necessarily what the industry has mm-hmm. demanded mm-hmm. or wanted or thrived upon so I, th- I think looking at that is the biggest biggest example of well, people that's going like, that was the thing there. I was going to just outline for the sake of like because the baseline of that argument is the assumption that multiplayer games are more profitable yeah. which they're more uh, they have recurrent spending they have monthly yeah. models they have games as a service you're plugging in DLC, you're plugging yeah. in microtransactions. Yeah. And so the assumption was that multiplayer games would just be exponentially more profitable than single player games. Yeah. Um, and something like, you know, Warframe or um, GTA Online, like, mm-hmm. I mean, GTA Online still brings in enough money where it's in the top 10 selling mm-hmm. every single Which, week. Which mind is mind. Yeah, yeah, just ridiculous. <laughs> and so like, but to address that, I mean, this year, um, just to pull some sales figures, like God of War sold 3.1 million in its first three days. Mm-hmm. Spidey did 3.3 million. Mm-hmm. Red Dead Redemption 2 did 17 million in its first 12 days. Um, in the first three days, it made $725 million mm-hmm. across its three days in revenue not units the other ones were units uh, shipped yeah and so there is this massive like potential need for single player stories and yeah. to be more immersed in something mm-hmm. contrastly though um contrastly on the other hand mm-hmm. on the other coin thing <laughs> Fortnite made 320 million and continues to make around about 320 million every month and so there is that again I, worrying figures though isn't yes it? but that's the business side of it worrying figures but like it, that is a I think that's an anomaly in gaming is the thing it's a really, Fortnite yeah because it's a specific multiplayer battle royale one mode sort of game like people enjoy that and because they can jump in and out mode too, but no one plays it yeah, exactly <laughs> but like and it's like um, like Battlefront and all that sort of thing where it's mm-hmm. just like it's just a multiplayer like that. that is essentially maybe not an anomaly but it is mm-hmm. essentially just what it's built for so it's going to make sell more because people want to play it with their friends yes like, right in that sense mm-hmm. and while I agree with you I'm going to play devil's advocate and Bring take it. maybe the other side and go back to that good old quote from the developers of Call of Duty when they just basically just released the facts and just said, look, the reason we're dropping the single player from our uh, games is because no one saw them through to completion. You can stamp your feet and say that you wanted this, but no one played it Mm -hmm. and no one got the achievements and we can track that. So are you actually just going to be annoyed because you don't have something? And if we give you something, are you even going to use it? So It's the the question of, is a a single player game being turned into a multiplayer game? Are the people just going to be complaining about the Mm not-haves rather than what they did have, you know, sort of thing? Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense, but... Call of, Duty, Call of Duty is a multiplayer game at its core. I think them taking away... That's what away, people predominantly see it. However, yeah. you have to admit that the campaigns... The campaigns are, are so well known, though. Yeah. yeah. Mm, like. I don't know. I don't know, because as as an outsider, I guess, mm-hmm. uh, to uh, the Call of Duty sort of world, mm-hmm. so like, not really appeals to me sort of thing. Um, looking at it, it's a multiplayer experience that has like a campaign tacked onto it, whereas it's like something like Fallout is a mm-hmm. single-player experience that's had a multiplayer thing tacked yeah, onto yeah. it. Yeah. So like, I guess you can, you can always say people are going to complain about the not-haves because there's going to be one half that goes, oh, actually, that was really good. Mm-hmm. Good, but mm-hmm. like I don't know them, them being both maybe is the best option that's, a, that's like, an interesting point though because yeah in terms of like culturally I don't know socially in terms of gamer circles like people who have grown up with Call of Duty expect a story based thing but yeah. the thing that, that hits the headlines is the multiplayer mm-hmm. and the thing that gets talked mm-hmm. about is the angry person online who beat you in the <laughs> yes. multiplayer match yeah. or whatever like that is kind of the way that people talk about it um, but I mean they ditched their single player campaign they reduced it to a set of cutscenes and, and the tutorial effectively that's what it marks yeah, yeah, and like, now yeah Call of Duty this year is the blackout battle royale mode because of course it is and the standard mm-hmm. multiplayer and they're even set Severing the zombies mode off to keep going ahead with just multiplayer Ooh, and, and battle yeah. royale. That's a yeah, strange so there is Rich, that. Rich was not happy about <clears throat> yeah, that. Yeah, I was going to say, woo. But to get back around to what you said about the way um, people finish their games, I've got some quotes from here. Uh, Keith Fuller, who is just like, an industry veteran, set up a whole bunch of companies, including uh, Treyarch, and I forget the other one he did, I think it was Rebellion, okay. um, said 90% of players who start your game will never see the end of it unless they watch a clip on YouTube. Um, which, that's the thing. That's mm. what a lot of people in the business meetings will be saying, well, why are we devoting so much time and resources to making a full thing? But again, I'd like to see the stats that he 
will to do that to, to think mm. because I. <sighs> well, he's he's based on the games that his companies have shipped. Okay, fair enough. That's so fair, like yeah. that. Well, like, I mean, if you do although try although, out although I I do remember I went on to um, I think it's a website called uh, True Achievements or Achievement Hunter mm-hmm, or something mm-hmm. like that, and uh, I was looking on the forums that they had there, and I was looking specifically for Red Dead Redemption Two. I was on there this morning, and there is. 10% of the people who have bought Red Dead Redemption 2 have not uh, got the first achievement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Another which one. is for completing the first mission or yeah. the first three missions. Like, it's... In Red Dead Online as well, because um, I was on achieve- I was looking at... Because basically you can use this website to try and track how mm-hmm. many people have unlocked certain mm-hmm. achievements. The thing that skews it is that it's only like tens of thousands of people and it's not it's not indicative of the entire player base. But it does okay. indicate like certain things. Cause it'll tell you the percentage and then like 20, 30,000 people have yeah. registered that they've yeah. got it. Yeah. So it's like a fraction. But um, on looking at the Red Dead Online stats, it was 48% of people have completed the opening. So half of the people just went, oh, well, no, nah, I'm not yeah, even yeah, doing no, this. Yeah, yeah, not even going to do it. And so, like, but that, that question of uh, on the business side, how much money mm. they invest in script writing and performance capture and all the different things that make for a full-length campaign, um, that idea that, like, most people aren't going to get it through to the end means that on the business side, they go, well, why are we even bothering? Yeah. And so some franchises, it suits. Like, Call of Duty hasn't really took a knock by losing its campaign. Mm. I, t- I tell you what, one of yeah. the perfect um, multiplayer slash single-player experiences mm. has to be our Big fan favorites, Dark Souls. Yes. Because the way mm. that they approach it, where it's like, it is just a single hybridized. player game, but you can jump into it, or you can invade, or you can go and help other people within the same confines. Mm-hmm. Mm. That is the perfect mix of that, because it's not saying, here's a separate mode, here's do all these other bits and bobs. It's just making the core experience feel like an amalgamation of single player yeah. and things. Yeah. And it's more hybrid games that I would love to see the industry moving towards, because mm-hmm. I feel like you can create a single player experience that has multiplayer elements thrown in and strewn out throughout the yeah. world. Mm-hmm. I feel like Red Dead Online is trying to do that at the moment with it's sort of like you can now attack this posse or yeah. this posse is now attacking you. It's baby steps. Still very I'm, defined here is the online mode, here is the single player. Yes, As opposed is. to something yeah. like you said, like well, Destiny kind of measures wouldn't, it together. Wouldn't you love that when it's just sort of like if you could just be like playing your world and then all of a sudden like you've been invaded or you'd be get a special message saying go to this that. Like, <laughs> like, this <laughs> That's what soul does. Yeah, but, like, get out. But, if it's, but that's the thing, if you, if you don't want it, you've got the option you to just banish the persona. Okay, or turn yeah, it off or whatever, but I just think that like that going forward of making it into a seamless part of the uh, of a Soul product, mm-hmm. pun intended, you know. Because like. I, I love the way that Neo handles that. Like it's very like because in Souls you, you get invaded or if you come across like blood stains on the the ground, it'll be like, okay, someone died here, another yeah. player died here. The way that Neo does it is that you come across like the the blood stains or whatever, and you can fight an AI version of that player. Yeah, like it, yeah, it develops yeah, yeah, an AI yeah, version yeah. of yeah. them. If you defeat them, you get the loot that they had on them at the time. It's so it's, like, it's a very it's cool a great idea, idea. Yeah. Um, and that's a way of like hybridizing the two modes. And you sort of get a little flavor of the multiplayer mm-hmm. combat, but it's not a multiplayer mode. Mm-hmm. And so, like, yeah, there are still lots of things that they can do with it. Um, I guess stuff like a way out and journey and that sort of thing do mm-hmm. really good multiplayer modes without being multiplayer because it's like you're interacting with people but without yeah. having to interact with them, which is always a good thing. A way out is that's an anomaly because that's like mm-hmm. it's like local couch co op or local co op, well, split screen regardless. You can play it online. You can, yeah. I mean, I'll tell you to. what, if we go back to the original statement of like, you know, uh, do people still want to see single player mm-hmm. games? Do people want to see couch co-op games more? Because yes. I bloody well do. Yes. I like. I miss the, uh, the the nights of just being able to sit next to somebody and be like, "Do you want to go play through this campaign yeah. two-player?" Mm. Time Splits Two is a great example of that. <laughs> we need yeah. more sort of stuff like that. Gang Beasts is a beautiful. I mean, thing. you got really upset when um, Halo Five came out and they'd removed they just removed um, the split screen. Yeah, which is a which is a fundamental experience. Like, I would say it's finally doing a sequel to Goldeneye, removing the split screen. It's like yeah. it's known for that yeah. thing. Yeah. And like, yeah, there's not there's few things more beautiful on this earth than a split screen Halo competition <laughs> so uh, yeah but that yeah that was a baffling thing but that yeah. was them playing into the that was another assumption that people only play online mm. and so yeah the percentage is skewed towards and, online and play, it, but it met massive backlash because yeah, yeah. of that decision and some of the like, some of the best multiplayer experiences are local ones mm. you kind of need that feedback from the person next mm. to you um, just to throw some other completion stats in um, this was um, taken from a GDC talk in 2014 uh, between Riot Games Tom Abernathy and Microsoft's Richard Roush III which I like Ooh, that guy's name that's a nice Ooh. name um, he basically just said that uh, they'd been scouring across uh, Steam's like, biggest player games or whatever um, to see how many people got all the way through them yeah. mm-hmm. and so these are in descending order so the, these are this is the full completion start or at least finishing the story Right. Uh, so The Walking Dead season 1 episode 1 um, people only 66% of people got through that mm-hmm. Mass Effect 2 only 56% people got oh, through that oh that hurts it does yeah. isn't it yeah. I'm going to hate you even more Bioshock Infinite only 53% of people got through that I can understand that <laughs> it's, my, it's my least favourite the trilogy Fair. Batman Arkham City 47% wow. Mass Effect 3 42% which uh, is fine more Mass Effect is bad. if anything you you saved yourself from a terrible ending. Yeah. But the worst one, Ash Millman, is Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, 
In fact, you can guess this. How many people finished Skyrim? Probably like 10% or something low. 10% from Ash? Right, okay. Well, if it's the biggest selling, like, it's one of the mm. biggest selling, like, franchises, like, ever at the mm -hmm. moment, isn't it? So I would say that it's going to have... That'll be a lower percentage. It's going to be like 40, yeah, I, re 40, I reckon. Maybe. No, I'm going to say 25. Okay, you both. I mean, I'm going, gonna look, in, I'm gonna going in with them, it's 32. 32. 32%. Yeah. Imagine that, because it, sh it sold how many units? Like, roughly? A like, hell of a, I don't know, a hell of a lot. It must be millions. like, it must be like, te like I mean, it's on everything. Yeah. I think I, I played it on a wall on the way into work, so it is literally <laughs> everywhere at this point. But. Go on. But, but. But. With the single player experience and with all of these games, especially with Skyrim and Mass Effect and all that sort of thing, mm. the open world, you can go and do what you want completing mm -hmm. them isn't the aim of the game it's enjoying the world that you're in that's mm -hmm. exactly what I was going to say because yeah. with, if it's a structured narrative thing okay like here's the level move into the next mm. one it's a level based system thing you stand a greater chance of keeping your audience participation high yeah. because you're introducing a gameplay loop which is this has a start this has a finish a really good example of that is uh, super hot like yeah. you know it's level based super short hot. keeps you going hot. moving forward, moving forward <laughs> yeah. and by the end of it you go oh I've completed the game without even intentionally yeah. trying to mm -hmm. set out to mm -hmm. do so. Now, if as soon as you introduce a Tom Clancy's Wildlands, okay, go anywhere thing, you immediately lose the focal mm. point. Yes. Fallout 4 is a great example of this. You get out into the vault and you go, am I now meant what? to rescue my boy oh. or should I go cunt some, like, some rad roaches sort of thing? So <laughs> like, uh, well, Fallout 76 only doubled down on that and was like, here yeah. you go, have an even wider yes. bunch of nothing. What am I doing? And, and this yeah. is the thing, like, what they try to do is games developers uh, set out when they make open world games and they mm. go, I'm going to make this the most accessible thing going because you can do anything, you can go anywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And at no point does it seem that somebody has set up, stand up and been like, maybe you shouldn't be so free range mm. because the moment that you start letting people do mm. everything, it means that people will just lose focus and have no idea what to totally. do. I disagree. I think making these games is important and having Ooh. open world narratives is important but you shouldn't care about the completion rate if you're going to do that because True. people will want to experience mm. it. I think the whole point of games, for me, definitely, and I would argue for other single single player, single player things, yes. um, is the experience of the world and the experience of the game mm -hmm. and even if it's a linear narrative or not like it's not like watching a film or sitting down and reading a book yes it's similar but it is about immersing yourself in another world and trying out all these different things and you might not want to see it through to the end you might have like your, your flavour for it or whatever You might. Mm -hmm. there is also importantly I'm like just jumping from point to point yeah, do it. it is also very importantly a very high turnover in the games industry for oh, new things yeah. coming out oh, yeah, yeah. so you're not going to sit so you're not going to sit there and do a 60 hour narrative like the, the whole point with completion rates is if they want you to complete it it should be shorter yeah like we are actually in paradoxically the best job in the world and the worst job in the world yeah. for what we have to cover because of the fact the best, oh it definitely it's is but it's just in terms of the content that keeps on coming out and yes. what we're asked to do it means that my attention span per game yeah. is much lower than if I was say a person who didn't work in the industry and just chose voting with my wallet what I wanted mm. to buy I probably yeah. would see more games through to completion mm. at the moment I've got Red Dead Redemption 2 Spyro Hitman 2 uh, and some other game uh, that's coming out. Oh, uh, the Banner Saga 3 yeah. that I'm still trying to complete. And because I can't, I, and then I look ahead <laughs> and I'm like, okay, Resident Evil 2 is coming out in January. Yeah. That means I've got to finish off one of these games so I can replace it with the other yeah, one. It's like, oh, oh. The thing that I love about this time of the year, because for the most part, I can, I, so far, somehow, managed mm. to stay on top of the vast majority of games. So You have like, an ungodly like, level of, a, of commitment. I'll tell you yeah. a life, it's I'll, scary. I'll tell you like, a, Scott a life played app. every game. Every yeah, one. I try and play literally everything. Also, marry a nerd, because then they'll either yeah. go and play something else or they'll read comics <laughs> or they'll do something that means you can just sit and game your ass off. <laughs> and it's brilliant. Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of, uh, we were talking before about like the way that you have these hybridized multiplayer, single player approaches to gameplay loops. I think it all it all drills down to what is the gameplay loop, what is the engaging element. Fallout 76 clearly didn't have that. Um, but it made me think when you were on about the like hybridized stuff, it made me think of the new Assassin's Creed. Um, oh, yes. Because Assassin's yep. Creed Origins has uh, timers and like you can do the microtransactions. I think they're in there. But either way, it has a loot system. Mm -hmm. um, and those things refresh on a given amount of time. And you have an, a huge sprawling, expansive mm. world. But it is fundamentally unfocused. But mm. they're hoping that you get yourself lost in all these different systems of timers and refresh rates and things to get stuck into in terms of the loot and the combat systems that it'll keep you engaged regardless yeah. obviously monetizing that loop is where a whole lot of devs go yeah. wrong um, but that's an interesting thing in terms of the rise of games as a service it's why um, I was looking at some sort of development interviews about Red Dead mm. Redemption 2 mm -hmm. and it's why they introduced the whole sort of radiant mini quest system of mm. like oh I've been bitten by a snake or like yeah. oh there's hey, some like Klu Klux Klan members in the woods oh. like what's going on with that like <laughs> it's 
but they they developed those specifically just so they could keep player investment going mm-hmm. because like if you're riding around and you've got to get say from Valentine to uh, Saint Denis yeah. that's a good that's a good 15 minute ride sort yeah. of thing so they know that you might get discouraged and mm-hmm. go, ah, oh, screw this, I'm just going to turn off the game. So having those sort of like random encounters means that you create your own story getting to mm-hmm. the point where you can carry on the main story. Yeah. It's stuff like that that's very, very clever. And well, I love, I mean, that's a focused open world. That's how I'd describe that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, and it, that, it's trying to find a balance because for the most part, like, I mean, when I was playing through Red Dead 2, I kind of thought of it as like the most biggest budget indie project ever. It's not. It's the, mm-hmm. you know, obviously AAA yeah. and Rockstar are the most opulent over the top, yeah. you know, developer going. But the mentalities that are at the core of it are like kind of fundamentally indie. They don't care if you don't like the the slow grind of stuff, and they don't care yeah. that it doesn't have a million different checklists. It's yeah, unapologetic yeah. in its approach. Yeah, it's unapologetically itself, yeah. brash, and yeah. they did exactly what they wanted to do. But it contrasts against something again like Assassin's Creed or the mm. standard open world game, yeah. where there's lists of stuff to check off. Like yeah. even Spider Man had a very formulaic approach to its open world. I but mean, then look, with Red Dead, just sorry, just no, 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 with Red Dead, there is lists to check. There is lists to. to uh, there are lists, man. There we do is them every day. Lists to yes. tick off because of the, the dinosaur bones. Oh my god, my words. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the dinosaur bones. The dinosaur bones. <laughs> Cowboy. They, they, did, like, they did include a whole bunch of little like tick boxy yes. type yes. stuff to just chase down, yeah. Thank you for saying my words. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> the dinosaur bones, the cave paintings, the legendary fish, legendary bears. Mm-hmm, there, mm-hmm. there is checkpoints still in there, so they're still put that in for True. the people that like a big collection. But mm-hmm. they do, but it didn't abrasively sort of get in the way, like say yeah. Fallout 76, when you literally have a checklist running yeah. down the right hand side that can almost spill off the other side yeah. of the page. And you mm-hmm. go, these two games side by side, they Ooh. effectively are the same core idea, mm-hmm. as in let a player loose and let them do whatever they want, but they approach them in very mm. different ways. So let's, let's um, address that head on. Do you guys play any games as a service? Anything that you come back to regularly and you see new content refresh or new weapons or new loadouts levels or whatever? Is there anything that you stick to? Or it might just be a, a case of the job where mm. we move on to lots of things all the time. The only one that I come back to is Rocket League. I still play that like nearly every yeah. day. Um, and I have done since 2015. Um, but there's not that many games that I keep up with. It used to be Rock Band for me. Mm. I used to yeah. download the song packs so, because it was every single like week. All the way. Yeah, and you used to just be like, cool, I've got new stuff to play, new mm-hmm. content to go through. I actually sunk a lot of money into that game because right. of that. And then I found a lovely little game called Rocksmith. Have you ever co-host come over? No. Yeah, but that's not better. Go on. You get I'm to gonna pl- do with me. You get to plug in your re- a real guitar and you ah. learn to play the actual like riffs mm. and stuff of like that as it goes on. There's a few like inconsistencies where they gamified yes. it, but seriously, like I got a not a cracked version, but I got the PC version, which yeah. was just supported better. And I just, had just every, said you bought it there. Just had every song, so it was yeah. just like, ah, oh, <laughs> this is nice. That thing actually had really good. Um, it was like amp- uh, amplifier modification or mm-hmm. uh, emulation where you could just be like, I want to sound like Metallica, and it's yeah. like, here's and this fifty grand amp that you're never going to afford. It was stuff like that. The nerds would sit there and just be like, oh my god, like I could never afford that. And now I can actually hear what it sounds like. Wait a minute, like. I'm, I'm getting them confused because Rocksmith was great. What was the one that was called something Rise of the Six Street? Oh, yeah, that was literally that. That was, was uh, that was a thing where they tried to do another rock band type thing. I would rather have played Guitar hell. Hero on the DS. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember playing rock band so much that I took up guitar. I was just like, no, at this really? point, I might as well just learn guitar because I was like living on it. <laughs> um, but yeah, in terms of the games as a service thing, rock band, I kind of have like Rocket League. I, I still check into Warframe, but that game just doesn't grab me. I, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm genuinely struggling to Because I think, the game um, I know that Josh and you and play a lot of Rainbow Six Siege yeah. and that has oh, like, yeah. new characters yeah. all the time. In fact, Overwatch is, is a pretty good example of mm-hmm. it too. Um, but it is interesting remarking on that stuff because the industry thinks that that's the way. And I mm. think you can monetize those gameplay loops and you can monetize those like content loops any, uh, in a way if the game itself is suited to that. I think mm. when they plug them into other stuff, it doesn't work. Um, and I've kind of got like some games written down here that I just thought we could highlight in regards to like I don't know the, the qualities that we took from them. I mean, we're not mm. Fortnite players. I did have Fortnite written down because yeah. it's like the biggest multiplayer thing, but we don't play Fortnite. For no, much. no. I've so, played the odd game. Like I have yeah, the yeah. odd game because like you know you're a friend who's like, oh, should we just? And I'm like, okay. I, if that's I have how to we like, communicate now. Okay. Yeah, I like have to scratch the edge. I have to know what the thing is. Yeah. And so I need. And so I did play Fortnite for a bit when it came out. And um, the other thing is Red Dead Redemption Two. Obviously, mm-hmm. there is the Red Dead Online split, mm. but I think the, mo- the three of us have played the majority single player. I know you're into the Red Dead Online. I've finished the the story that's mm-hmm. there, and I've and I've ranked up my guy enough to know that I am now starting to question what I do next. That was mm-hmm. my I thought. Literally, after, like, I literally, the first half. Like, I, <laughs> I've bought. I've bought the best gun for my loadout. I have no interest in owning any other clothes. I have no interest interested in owning any of the other guns because mm. I've got them all in single player and I know what my play style mm. favors and now I'm like what can they do what do I do now I rob a train mm. uh, there's a, there's always only ever three items do you on the train something 
I've but I've got enough money to have bought everything. Do you want to rob what, a bank? Why wouldn't can't. you do this you in can't. single player anyway? Well, yeah, exactly. Why wouldn't so, you? I'm, so I'm very confused <laughs> as to where I go from. Plays now. a character so, with a voice. So I'm actually going to be stepping away from Red Dead Online over Christmas mm -hmm. uh, and just going to wait and see what happens when it comes mm. back. Like, mm -hmm. I think that's fair. I mean, there was something that I was going to bring up uh, a while back when we were talking about mm. single player games that get given multiplayer modes, and we talked about The Last of Us a bit. Mm. But in terms of Sony's vision or Sony's like industry status at the minute, they have this reputation as being this like narrative heavy company, mm. and everything, all their temple franchises and, and titles this gen have been single player focused. Yeah. Um, but something like Uncharted and The Last of Us does have these multiplayer modes put in, whereas God of War Horizon don't. Yeah. yeah. And so, what do you guys I'm, think for the next generation? Oh, I'm worried. I can't imagine what a God of War. Multiplayer... Well, they did one in God of War Ascension, and everyone hated it. Yeah. But that was the old combat. The thing so. is, that I want to make a list on single player games that had surprisingly good multiplayer mm, offerings. In. I, think that, I think that that would actually go down quite well. Mm -hmm. But it's just, personally, if I... Last of Us, God of War, Spider-Man. Yes. Spider-Man wouldn't work. Do I want to see multiplayer in these? <laughs> well, going from Batman and seeing how the multiplayer worked yeah, in that, in no, no thank you. <laughs> God of War, no thank you again, mm. unless you could have an asymmetrical uh, style thing like Evolve, yeah. where yeah. you have uh, one of them as a Titan and the other people Love trying to Evolve. take it down. Oh, that'd be that, all right. I'd like to see it in a Horizon Zero, Zero Dawn, with a group of people working together to take down like, Thunder Jaws and dinosaur. stuff. Imagine if somebody could. Evolve. Oh. It's all Evolve. I know. Everything comes back to Evolve. Know, <laughs> Best <laughs> multiplayer experience oh, there it's is. Not, though. Although I have to just uh, point out as well, we are getting the board game of Horizon in, which is literally what I've just. Oh, good. Is there, is there a little <laughs> tiny Aloy that I can play as? There is, and also the Thunder Jaw is literally this big. Good. Oh, it's that's huge. So cool. That's the best thing. Because yeah. yeah, if you were going to do an asymmetric Horizon thing, I would want one player to be Aloy and everyone else can be all the other uh, beasties, mm. and then just go and try and chase her down. Because there's not been oh, anywhere oh. near <laughs> as I punch a microphone. <laughs> And there's not been anywhere near enough asymmetrical multiplayer games. We had Evolve, we got well, Friday the 13th. We had, we had the glut and then the bottom fell out of it because of Evolve. I'm not, I'm not, yeah, just, I'm, no, no, I'm not putting it on, on a podium just because it's one of the games <laughs> that you like. I am saying that it did mark yeah, a, yeah, a turning yeah. point in the industry because everyone was like, this is so money grabbing and yes. what are we getting from it? And the that experience was, is so similar. Yeah, time. that was like a bad PR thing where they said mm. it was built with DLC in mind or it's it's going to have all these DLC practices. Yeah. And that, for like as soon as we acknowledge games as a service as part of a game <laughs> sell, everyone just goes, wait, oh, we don't like that. Yeah, it's, but it's, if you do it conf like confidently and intelligently, it's there it's, is a way to do it. It's why Fable Legends uh, mm. died out. It's why loads of other games dropped off the yeah. face. And I wonder if this is where the Battle Royale mode head thing is headed. But that is a thing for another day. That, <laughs> that is. We actually, we should talk about that another mm -hmm. time. But yeah. yeah, no, I think the, um, the Evolve stuff and Isometrical stuff is really interesting and mm. that... Mm, I don't want to say Evolve killed the industry because it didn't. I, it, like, I guess I've always played it on the uh, the free to play Xbox yeah. download yeah, I mean, the, as well, which makes a whole different world yes. of, of of multiplayer stuff. Because as soon as they take away that paid element, you're like, well, whatever. Well, that, yeah, I mean, uh, Evolve is kind of like its own thing because mm -hmm. it was the follow up to Left 4 Dead. It had all yeah. this weight behind it, and then obviously they said all the wrong things in the lead up, and then the <laughs> yeah. gameplay was kind of you were running around too much. Yeah, there. yeah. They still balanced it and fixed it, but ultimately it shut down again. Um, but in terms of um, microtransactions and DLC and games as a service, um, how what do you guys think in terms of the way that they infiltrate single player experiences. Like, would you, like, because Devil May Cry 5, for example, is going to have microtransactions, and Mortal Kombat uh, 10 also had them as well. You could just buy fatalities. Yeah. And so, I, do you think that cheapens the experience? or? There has been many, many microtransactions that I do have a problem with, mm. and I hate it when I see them uh, go into single player. A good example would be pretty much anything that Ubisoft has mm. done yeah. just because well, of the, the fact Assassin's Creed yeah. has them, like whenever you, whenever you're doing a single player experience I do not want to be reminded that I have to download something for the from the internet to mm. to do it I feel like I, I just I just don't understand the, the the infection that's going on. Well, I think they think that like say you're by, you're fighting some boss and you die and then it just goes hey if you there's a thing right if you spend fifty pence right now I'll give you a weapon that'll beat that boss yeah, and a just, lot of people go yeah, yeah all right no nah that's not that all no, that's not an Assassin's you. Creed thing by the way that's the, just an no, assumption. no no, no, no yeah, but yeah. that's 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 a whole different universe of arcade gaming and arcade mm -hmm. gaming should be its thing. Multiplayer gaming should be its thing and single player should be its thing. I am a fan of the regiments. Um, I don't really <laughs> want multiplayer gaming leaking into single player, but like I feel like I'm a very specific sort of player when it comes mm. to these sort of things. So I have got quite a strong opinion that I'd like. I like single player experiences to be single player experiences. I don't want people coming in and messing with yeah. my messing See, with my crap or I don't want anything else like that. Uh -huh. I want to play my story through and have it like narrative heavy 
play it out like a cinematic experience without downloading anything else and have a good time doing it. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I think that there is a lot to be said for the the concept of losing, of not beating something mm. easily on your mm. first try yes. because of an artificial mm. inflation that you've paid yeah. for. I think that you learn more through your losses mm. and mistakes than you can ever do from your victories. I think that's mm. why so. Souls took back off again because it, it was something that just abrasively said, like, you're going to get cut down yeah. until yeah. you get good. Yeah. And people kind of, kind of found that the reward in there was so much more worthwhile than mm-hmm. paying their way through it um, or anything like that. Yeah. Um, just to quickly mention the thing you said about like single player games being very direct kind of, you know, focused mm, yeah. stories or narratives. Um, one of the things that I love from Dark Souls 2, I mentioned Dark Souls in every podcast, I don't mean <laughs> to, yeah. but Dark Souls it's 2. It's so prevalent in the industry. Yeah, but Dark Souls 2, uh, the, the mirror boss, the guy with the mirror shield. I think that that was a fantastic um, way to bring people yeah, into. Yeah, so you I had like, you're an AI boss, but he had a mirror shield. He would summon other players. Mm. And so from, from there, from exactly there, yeah. and on his arm. <laughs> and it made and, it great uh, because you were basically like, you're fighting a boss, an AI, and you are having the challenge of going up against another player. Yeah. And that could mean that your experience would be different every single time. Mm-hmm. And you could be that player going in to harass other people. And just, <laughs> if you're good at the game, you're making sure that no one's going to get past that. Sort yeah. Of thing. It's, it's and fantastic. I think, like, that whole thing of dropping in and helping mm-hmm. people out, like, that's obviously something that the Souls, Souls games, Soulsborne games all have. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'd be, I don't want to gate it off by saying it has to be a specific single player thing. I think I still love that too. Like, the story yeah, of yeah. God of War is what I adore. And I wouldn't want players in God of War specifically. Mm-hmm. But I still think the industry is experimenting with where they can mesh those things together and Souls yeah. is one of the only examples of it being done well mm-hmm. so I'm kind of interested to see what they can do going yeah. forward and what ideas like come to mind because mm. something like Fallout 76 didn't do anything right yeah that is the the prime example of taking a single player experience and trying to stretch it though mm-hmm. um, but yeah I think multiplayer in, in single player games in these examples is Potentially a good thing, and maybe something. They Say if you if you lost maybe. to that summoned player, though, you'd oh, be like, "Well, I only so lost because angry. it's yeah, it's a person." I, would, I, I wouldn't be able to handle it's it. So like, Get out! Um, mm-hmm. But I, I don't know. I don't. I don't even think things need to be like narratively like linear or whatever mm-hmm. in single player games because open world games are so fantastic as well. But mm-hmm. I think it's. I think you should. I think the focus should be on experience and the experience of the world and like mm-hmm. if industry giants are taking who completes the game as to whether they should make single player games mm. or not. I think that's a real skewed yeah. thing well, to take so, it on. I so, that right? was the mentality last generation and it mm. kind of it kind of kept for the last few years and we saw so many multiplayer games, games as a service, loot boxes, microtransactions, but the latest statement from Sony seems to be a complete inversion of that and yeah. they've realized the real worth of stories again, which is something that obviously to bring it all the way back around, we said was always there yeah. all along. Yeah. And so it's something that it's good to see that someone on Sony's level is as big as that. And Phil Spencer's the same on Xbox mm-hmm. saying mm-hmm. that like people do value stories. And we've got going forward into 2019 a lot of single player heavy games mm. coming up as well. And Bastable. also a lot of the uh, remakes that are coming out as well are from games that didn't have multiplayer aspects, like you've got mm. the Medieval one coming mm. out. You've got um, oh, so Resident, excited Resident, for Medieval. Resident, Evil, Resident Evil 2. I don't yeah. know if it will have co op installed in it. I don't know what they're tweaking about I think that. It does. Psychonauts, things that we've mentioned before. Like, like all of these games are coming out, and it's just kind of like, cool. It's good, yeah. And you can have a bit <laughs> of everything. It's, it's, good. A good, it's a good time to be a single player yeah. focused. Gamer. It's a good time to be a gamer. Like yeah, it's it's it really a good is, industry really to be is. in right now. So yes, yeah, so thank you both very much for joining me for this oh, lovely, lovely you. podcast. And thank all of you as well. You can find us in the comments if you're watching the video or on social media. Uh, this has been the What Culture Gaming Podcast. I've been your host, Scott, joined by Ash. Hello, I've been Ash. John goodbye, by even. <laughs> Bye, Hello and goodbye. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.